Zipbot's got some boobs too. <laughs> so this is essentially the simple self-driving computer that runs in your Tesla cars, by the way. This is the it's literally the first time the robot has operated without a tether was on stage tonight. So the robot can actually do a lot more than we just showed you. We just didn't want it to fall on its face. Uh, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll show you some videos now of the robot doing a bunch of other things. Um, yeah, which are less risky. Um, yeah. We should close the screen, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we wanted to show a little bit more what we've done over the past few months with the pod and just walking around and dancing on stage. Uh, just humble beginnings, but uh, you can see the autopilot neural networks running as is, just retrained for the pod uh, directly on that, on that new platform. That's yeah. my watering can. Yeah, when you, when you see a rendered view, that's, that's the robot, what's the, that's the world the robot sees. So it's, it's it very clearly identifying objects like this is the object it should pick up, picking it up. Um, yeah. We use the same process as we did for Autopilot to collect data and train neural networks that we then deploy on the robot. Uh, that's an example that illustrates the upper body a little bit more. And Something that we'll good. like try to nail down in a few months, over the next few months, I would say, uh, to perfection. This is really an actual station in the Fremont factory as well that it's working at. Yep. So. And that's not the only thing we have to show today, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, th that, that, uh, what you saw was uh, what we call Bumble C. That's our uh, uh, sort of rough development robot uh, using semi-off-the-shelf actuators. And we actually have uh, an Optimus bot with uh, 
fully Tesla designed and built actuators, um, battery pack, uh, control system, everything. Um, it, it, it wasn't quite ready to walk, uh, but it, I think it will walk in a few weeks. Um, but we wanted to show you the, the robot, uh, the, 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 something that's actually fairly close to what will go into production and, um, and show you all, all the things it can do. So let's bring it out. Do it. So here you're seeing uh, Optimus with uh, th th these are the with, the with the degrees of freedom that we expect to have in Optimus production unit one, uh, which is the ability to move uh, all the fingers independently, uh, move the uh, to have the, the thumb have uh, two degrees of freedom, uh, so it has opposable thumbs, and uh, both left and right hand, so it's able to operate uh, tools and do useful things. Our goal is to make um, a a useful humanoid robot as quickly as possible. And uh, we've also designed it using the same discipline that we use in designing the car, which is to say to, to design it for manufacturing uh, such that it's possible to make the robot at, in, in high volume uh, at low cost uh, with high reliability. So that, that's incredibly important. I mean, you've all seen very impressive humanoid uh, robot demonstrations, um, and that, that's great, but what are they missing? Um, they're missing a brain. They, they, don't, they don't have the, the intelligence to navigate the world uh, by themselves. And they're, they're also very expensive um, and made in low volume. Um, whereas uh, this, this is, Optimus is designed to be an extremely capable robot, but made in, in very high volume, probably ultimately millions of units. Um, and it, it, it is expected to cost much less than a car. I'll just bring it so, directly to the right here. Uh, I would say probably less than $20,000.